So Tony, the book that you wrote, The Sting of the Peppercorns, uh, how would you encapsulate its story briefly? Well, I think that, uh, you see, the book uh, attempts to capture a certain time in history of Goa, particularly my feeling is that it's a very important time. Uh, since, the 60s. Yeah, the 60s where the Portuguese rule ended after 451 years and how uh, the story of a family which was a pretty prominent family, how the family cascaded downwards and how a lot of foreign elements that came into Goa, including the hippies, either affected indirectly or directly the son, one of the, son, one of the children. And then the, the need for change and reassimilation, those things are pretty much depicted in the characters and the personalities both of the mother, uh, the father who was pro-independence of Goa, but the mother was not. And uh, the children, one of them who had come from Coimbra, was very, very, had a, more of a colonial type of personality. And the other son was sort of a in-between, you know, he was more attached to Goa and India. And the sister was extremely idealistic. Uh, you know, the whole element of wow to St. Francis Xavier, which, was, which, uh, which existed in Goa at that time. I don't know whether it still exists, and I think it does to some extent. And I think it's, it's, it's rather typical Goan uh, characterization where, where certain things like uh, dignity, and a sort of uh, uh, clear commitment to whatever they decide in life is very much was the character of the, of the Goan character. This is a, a story which repeats itself in many families. Isn't it a bit strange that it has not been written about so far? Uh, I think uh, you're absolutely right. I think, uh, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot very often gets written uh, but uh, a novel tells a human story. To me, uh, uh, for example, uh, I started thinking of Goa much more when I went abroad. That's true, I, it always think, happens. Yeah, and I think that uh, every person of the diaspora has that certain yearning for his country. You know, particularly the, the land that he was born in. And uh, he looks at the history, at the culture, and the people in a different perspective. Because obviously he has the freedom. He doesn't live there anymore. Yeah. So He's not so close to the picture too. To he's get not blood. so close, so he can be much more yeah. analytical. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there is a, when, I, when I went to New York, when I went to the United States, uh, I must say, you know, it was quite amazing. I was brought up in, a, in this Luso Indian culture. Yeah. Uh, for example, I never had any problems adjusting to New York or to America for the very simple reason is that uh, my music, for example, yeah. Yeah. was European and American. Yeah. You know, and I think I consider music as a very important element in my life. Yes. And then I spoke Portuguese very well. Yeah. And I was even surprised that I was identified as somebody of Hispanic origin. And I, I had to identify myself all the time yeah. that I am not Hispanic. I see. Actually, my patients, some patients would come yeah. and address me in Spanish. in Spanish. And you won't believe this. This is the absolute truth. Yeah. When I went to the U.S. as an intern, yeah. I had never learned Spanish, but the first time I realized that I could speak Spanish. I see. And I, I could see. speak Spanish because I could speak Portuguese. Yeah. And I had to then, you know, explain to patients, you know, that I'm really not Spanish, and you know, to go down, to slow down with the, with, I see. with, the, with, the, with the Spanish and so on. But you feel a novel is a good way of tackling, you know, issues from our past, which might be a bit inconvenient or, you know, complex? Uh, 
Uh, I think, uh, again, uh, yes, as I said, uh, you know, uh, the, the famous Argentinian uh, writer Mario Rosa Vargas uh, said that, uh, you know, uh, novel fiction is a lie, but within that lie there are strong elements of truth. And I think that uh, in the personalities of people, uh, you know, that's where you have the human story which uh, you cannot really tell otherwise. For example, to give you a simple example, you know, we have a lot of tragedies in the world today. For example, in Iraq or in Afghanistan, you know, where these people, it has been horrible, the war and the, the consequences. We, we hear all that in the media. We hear that, you know, there was a bombing. We, we hear that, uh, uh, that so many people died. They just figures to us. They are just figures, but we, you know, nobody, we don't know the story. We don't know the story of a family. How has it affected them? Yeah. You know, and in terms of characters, personalities, and then how do they reorganize themselves? How do they survive? How do they live? Yeah. And that is not captured. And the novel is the ideal, in my perspective, is the ideal source to capture that. For example, when I, I, I've given this obviously quite a lot of thought yeah. and when I looked there are a lot of things in Goa during my childhood and adolescent years that, that we did not even know yeah. you know we were not even told right. and there was an element uh, of secrecy and I don't know where it comes from you see yeah. and part of that is captured in the novel as well you see, I see. I see. that secrets there was this element of uh, chivalry in Goa yeah. Uh, part of it came from Portugal, from the Portuguese, but part of it is Indian as well. You see, the Indian woman, for example, yeah. you don't, she doesn't tell what's in her mind. You see, right. she accepts life the way it is. It is very unwestern, for example, uh, and there is uh, there are a lot of secrets that that people keep within themselves yeah. and don't expound, and that is true in in. In Indian relationships, even. Right. It, I mean, I'm sure that all that has changed. Yeah. You see, for example, uh, we never converse with our father. Right. You know, like, right. Right. what are his views? What are his ideas? Yeah. You know, I I don't know my father. I yeah. I lived with my father, but I have no idea idea or a concept of my father, which yeah. I uh, you know, which is not within myself. I see. And I think about it a lot. I see. See, so uh, for example. Uh, the Inquisition. Yeah. It was never talked about during the Portuguese. Yeah. I never knew that there was such a thing. Yeah, that's true. Or even the supernatural and you know demonic spirits and the other kind of. Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. But you are an eminent uh, cardiologist in that sense. So fiction is a world world away. Does it kind of excite <laughs> the creative side of your brain, or is it a form of relaxing? I think that uh, genetically, I'm a writer. I see. You see. And I have, uh, I have, I have gone through that in medicine because when I became a doctor, the reason why I left uh, Goa, not because, not it wasn't because I could make a living here. You know, doctors yeah, yeah, always do yeah. well wherever they are. Right. But because I wanted to, to just increase my knowledge, I wanted to create, produce, which I found that that element didn't exist. As a matter of fact. I wrote a trio tries on dreams when I was a medical student. I see. And there was no nowhere to publish it. I see. Actually, and, and I remember giving it to my professor and he liked it very much. In Goa. In Goa. But there was there was nothing. You know, I see. And that was my I myself was, was testing myself I see. whether I could think. And I really wanted to do research. And that was the reason why I went to the US. And then I followed that path, you know, quite consistently, and I did extremely well in terms. Of I had more than 170 original publications. You know, I pioneered the field of cardiac electrophysiology. I uh, was the first one who established uh, the electrophysiology department at, in New York City. Uh, you know, 26 years ago, and now it's one of the finest in the in the country and pretty soon it's probably going to be one of the three labs in the world as a matter of fact with the current director and you know and the team of people that we have 
so I think that very little is possible in Goa, unfortunately, in a small place like this. So, uh, yeah. are Goans, uh, you know, destined to keep migrating, or how do you see it? Well, no, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a very maybe hard. come back, have one foot here, or do something for Goa, like you all have done with the Heart Foundation. I think, you know, that, that is a possibility. As you know, uh, a lot of Indians, uh, the Indians in the U.S. are doing phenomenal. You know, that they are the richest community of the immigrants, or the entire immigrant. And as you know, in Silicon Valley, a lot of creativity in software. In the medical field as well, uh, Indians, particularly in cardiovascular medicine, uh, some of them are in the forefront, particularly in electrophysiology. And that may be, I don't know why, but it may be that Indians are very good mathematically. 